Hello and welcome to Life Work with Maya. My name's Arjun, I'm the show's producer and this week I've picked a really relevant recording from the archive that was originally released in 2001 where Maya shared the August reset which is currently what Maya herself is doing, taking a bit of a rest and a reset herself. I hope you enjoyed this and the subsequent recordings that come from it. This is Life Work with Maya, where we talk about success on your terms and tune in to work and lives that feel spacious, abundant, and aligned with who we truly are. I'm back and refreshed and ready to go with a mini season focused specifically on the summer and specifically on August to give us all a bit of a reset ahead of September and the last quarter of the year. First of all, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to all of you as listeners. It has been amazing actually to watch the numbers grow despite the fact that it was a season pause and I was sharing bonus episode after bonus episode. So thank you so much for being along on this journey with me. And I have enjoyed sharing episodes, but I'm really looking forward to sharing some new content with you. I've been busy, busy coaching, especially in July. And I've got lots of ideas and themes that have been emerging from the coaching, as well as from the research that I'm continuously involved with. And so I hope that in these short episodes, you will have a bit of a structured guide through your August so that you can return back in September to working life, refreshed, energized, but also with a little bit more vision and clarity about your work and your life. What I notice in August is I I think of August as probably one of the laziest months of the year. It probably takes me a week or two to realize that each year. And so this year I wanted to preempt some of that and actually prepare for a great August and really make the most of the conditions of August. And that's what this season is about. And if I just refer back to the purpose of this podcast, it is called The Golden Hour. It's all about making changes in your life and work in just one hour a day, utilizing those precious hours. Often they might be early on in the morning or they may be for you at other times of the day, but really carving out specific time each day to do the things that are going to most move the dial for you in your work and your life. And I often talk about three components here, work, self and relationships. And actually, having done a lot of intensive work in July with clients, I'm noticing not all of them, but many are talking about a pre-August burnout. It's been a particularly demanding year in lots of ways. And particularly in the workplace, there have been new challenges and new demands made of us. So with that in mind, what I didn't want was to provide a month's worth of heavy content. I want you to put this on, pop it on, go for a quick stroll or tidy a corner uh, of your home and feel like you are refreshed and relaxed and not being served up sort of heavy going work content. And so that means that I'm going to be focusing on the self component and also the relationships component um, of those three rather than necessarily the work. That doesn't mean that we're not going to get into some work things, but I want to do it in a way that is really in line with what August is all about. So a little bit more lazy, dreamy, daydreamy, making the most of the fact that you may well have some different moments in August than in your usual life. And how do we both enjoy those, make the most of those, and then draw out some of that for September too. So I hope that gives you a bit more of an idea of what we're going to be doing in this month ahead. But I also want to emphasize that like many of my clients, the chances are that you are incredibly motivated, hardworking. And so the thing that can often suffer is that rest and rejuvenation and that switching off period. And whilst we might think that we're very virtuous for being so conscientious, actually a lot of the magic is happening when we do give our brains the ability to 
almost get bored and then generate new ideas, new visions for what we want to do and get that clarity about what's important to us. So if you want to view it through an efficiency lens, see this month ahead as a bit of a guided refresh. What I notice in clients, and I even notice it, I've been noticing it myself recently, actually, is that we are switched on. We're very switched on and we are very much thinking about our work. And that means that when we do get those pockets and moments and opportunities to switch off, it doesn't always come that easily. And yet when we do tap into that and we do start to access those more feelings, those states which are more relaxed, which are more expansive, that's often when the real vision, the real clarity comes. So just as important as networking and having really clear work objectives, I see this August reset as absolutely critical and the bedrock of you then having a smashing final quarter of this year. So I hope that sold it to you a bit before you think, oh, she's going to make us daydream and and doodle and all sorts of things. I hope that sold it to you a little bit. And so let's get cracking with today's thoughts. So three aspects here. One is summer projects, two is summer moments, and three is summer you. So what do I mean by that? So summer projects first is Often we do have a bit of a change in pace and routine in August. And this is a great opportunity to do the things which we enjoy doing, which give us a sense of satisfaction, nothing too heavy going, nothing that's going to overwhelm us. We're looking at finding ways to sort of almost occupy our brains, give us a sense of satisfaction, do something which is going to set us up perhaps for, you know, September or the months ahead. But it's also something which we perhaps weren't able to do in previous months because of the pace of life. So to give you some really little examples, for me, one of them is my folders, my Dropbox folders have gone a little bit out of control in the last few months or really, if I'm honest, in the last couple of years. And so I just need to spend some time tidying those up and then giving, you know, proper names, new names, new folders, so that I can just look at the entirety of my work and life uh, in that Dropbox folder. And it makes sense, things are organized, easy to retrieve, and everything doesn't look like it's all a bit out of control. So I've actually enjoyed the sense of satisfaction you get from just tapping away at that. I I can sit on my sofa, I can have music on. Uh, It's a little bit dull, but it's also a little bit relaxing. It gives you kind of the same sense of satisfaction, I think, as, you know, sort of lawn mowing, maybe. Not that that's on my summer projects list. Another example, my husband loves making toasted seeds and yet he hasn't had a chance to get hold of the seeds and then spend the time. My son really enjoys doing it with him, but then we end up getting these really delicious salty toasted seeds in lots of jars and they're just a nice healthy snack for the kids, for me. And so he said that that's something he would like to do in the summer. So you're both sort of nourishing yourself, but it's nothing overwhelming. Those are just two examples, but there are other fun things as well. So I've been talking to friends about what books and what series I want to watch on on Netflix, for example. And it could be that you read a whole set, you know, set of of books or on Audible, or that you pick out like a series of films that you want to watch. And so you make it really fun and a bit of a project in itself, and yet it can be something that is really relaxing as well with a bit of a theme to it. So I'm still picking out what I'm going to be watching, what I'm going to be reading. In fact, if anyone has any good fiction uh, recommendations, I'm struggling a little bit, uh, but that's on one of my project lists is just to have a better list of books because what I've noticed is that when people are recommending things, it's never at the same time as when I actually need the books. So I need to improve my process there because I I do find it really relaxing to hold a physical book. I spend much of the year listening to audiobooks, but in the summer months, I want to have physical books to pick up. I also want to have reading time with the kids where we're all reading our own things. So it's important to me that I have good novels on hand and not my usual, which is loads of positive psychology, business books and self-help books, which is my, my, my default diet when it comes to books. So that's another example um, of things that might set you up for little projects that will give you a satisfaction to tick off at the end of August. And yet they're not things that you might have done perhaps in a busy uh, March or February. 
Then I've got summer moments. And again, the idea of these are perhaps when you're in September, when you look back, what are those things that will remind you of your summer this year? So for me, we have a willow tree outside and I do like watching that in the wind. And so just being able to sit outside with with a coffee and enjoy that soothing uh, breeze and sound uh, of the weeping willow is a, just a really tiny thing, but it's something I know I can do every day. I've also got fruit picking on the list. So I think with my podcast diet is slightly Americanized. And so fruit picking is a big thing over there. And so it's made its way onto my list of summer moments as well. And then the other one is just lots of swimming. And I have been away with my son and actually taught him how to swim, which I'm really, really proud of. And so want to go as often as possible swimming this month. And to me, that's one of the refreshing feelings, isn't it? That post once you've had a swim and and you feel all refreshed on a hot day. So those are some examples of summer moments, nothing huge, um, nothing that is going to be require sort of a whole holiday or anything, but things that can kind of almost define uh, your August for you. What what are those for you? And I just encourage you right now um, to jot a couple down. If you're listening to this on your phone, perhaps take out your notes and and jot a couple of things down. And actually, before I move on to to the final piece, I did want to acknowledge, obviously, for lots of you, that's going to be sports. We've already had a great July and that currently with the Olympics on. I know that's going to be a big theme for lots of you as well. And so perhaps your summer moments will be about tagging on additional things to that. The final piece I wanted to mention, and perhaps I will keep this brief so that we can delve into it a little bit further for future episodes, but it was just the relationships aspect. And so when it comes to our relationships, whether they're with family, close family or friends, We may have fallen into routines uh, over the course of the year. And I also see August as an opportunity to sort of break, break out of that. So in my case, I am attempting to take August off. That is hopefully the nature of being an executive coach and especially working closely with a business school. They're they're kind of shot over August. So I am hoping to do that and let's, I will report back on how that goes for me. But, um, One of the things I want to do is make time for friends who don't live locally. So it's quite easy, I think, during the busyness of work and and school runs to focus perhaps more on local relationships and friends. And so I've made a conscious effort to actually get things into the diary with my wider circle of friends. And when I say wider, I mean uh, geographically wider. And so to me, that's going to be a defining aspect of August. For everyone, it's going to be different. And so I I guess I just encourage you to think perhaps what is it about August that might lend itself to something which you can't normally do in, in other months. And when it comes to relationships, is there anything there that you would like to be able to remember your August by? So I guess I'll leave it at that. And I will wrap up for today. So next time we are going to be continuing this season and theme of the August reset. We're going to be talking about switching on and switching off uh, because as I've mentioned, actually, it's not always easy just to switch off and give ourselves that rest. So some strategies for doing that and making that a lot easier. Thank you for listening to Life Work with Maya. If you've got to this point, I'm guessing you found it valuable. So do share the link with somebody else who can benefit. In an age of materialism and us trying to stay on top of clutter, what could be nicer than to send a non-clutter digital link to somebody and say, I listened to this and I thought you might love it. What a great way to show your care and consideration for them. If you haven't left a review, now is the time and make sure that you are subscribed on Spotify or you're following along on Apple Podcasts. And if you really want to help the show grow, then do share the link on IG stories, Instagram stories, or reshare or discuss your thoughts with my LinkedIn posts. 
You can find me on LinkedIn and Instagram. Do you feel free to send me messages there? I love having dialogue with my listeners um, and the links to those handles are in the show notes. Thanks for listening and I look forward to connecting with you next time. Bye-bye.